So I, I was waiting and waiting and then I decided to come see what they were doing. Well, they're power washing the floor, which I do not recommend. Do not power wash your concrete floor inside of a building. And so I, I, I got pretty frustrated, as you can imagine, because I mean, this is what I do is talk about it. Hello everyone, I am here with a bit of an echo because I'm in my garage. Uh, we keep cleaning and getting rid of stuff and downsizing stuff and trying to get organized. And um, in that process, we had a great day the other day and we decided, I just want to tell you a story, something happened that was not good. I, I suggested we should clean out the garage and sweep it out and clean the floor because it was dingy. You know, we, this is concrete floors, they're not sealed or anything. Um, this is an attached garage, just so you know, and my office is above. So I'm in my office and my husband and my son are down here cleaning. They pulled everything out into the driveway. And I think I'm hearing this noise and I, and I couldn't do any videos up there. So I, I was waiting and waiting and then I decided to come see what they were doing. Well, they're power washing the floor, which I do not recommend. Do not power wash your concrete floor inside of a building. And so I, I, I got pretty frustrated, as you can imagine, because I mean, this is what I do is talk about it. And my husband is involved. He sees a lot of my videos and he didn't, it didn't connect the dots that power washing the floor. There's cardboard getting wet. There's all kinds of stuff. So anyway, you can imagine I wasn't happy. And, um, and so we had some words and, um, and we, we are still married, but, um, but I, I stopped, we stopped, they stopped. I asked them to stop. And, um, and we reassessed. Um, so, but the bottom line is that this concrete took on a lot of water. So a lot of, all the doors were open, all the windows were open, um, and it was hot outside, but it wasn't really dry outside. It was a little bit humid. So it was evaporating some of it, but some of it was soaking into the concrete. And, and since we don't know how much water was put on the concrete, I was really nervous about it. And initially it was really damp in here. So what we did, so, so you can, if this happens to you, what you should do. So we got out every humid dehumidifier we have. There's one, and there's another one, and there's another one. And so we got three in here. This is less than a thousand square feet. So that's way, these probably each do a thousand square feet. So it's way more than we needed. And then we also, somewhere here, I don't see it now, but we uh, had a, a space heater. So a plug-in electric space heater. So we plugged that in. So our goal was to get it as hot in here as possible. And those dehumidifiers put out heat. And we turned on the, ra there's radiant heat in these floors. So we turned on the radiant heat and the space heater. And it was actually pretty warm outside. So we we're trying to get it hot in here just because then the air can hold more moisture and we can take the moisture out with the dehumidifiers. So we got it up to about 77 is where we were at. Everything was closed. It, it, we had rain. I didn't bring any, any cars in. I didn't want the cars coming in with more water. So our cars are outside. And, um, and so um, to make this shorter story, we did get the humidity down. It's pretty good in here. We got it down to at 77 degrees, we got it down to 30. And um, I don't know how many buckets that was. In the process, we learned that one of our dehumidifiers, while it runs, doesn't actually get water out of here or measure it correctly. So one is going in the garbage. Um, so that was a good thing to learn. Uh, so then what I had to explain was that as we lower the temperature, we can't just turn these off. Just because it was good at 77 degrees and 30% humidity doesn't mean it's going to be good at 50 degrees, which is closer to what it is outside. Um, now this is a heated garage. We usually keep it at 55, but that 77 degrees at 30% relative humidity is not going to be the same humidity when we lower the temperature to 55. So right now we lowered the temperature to 69. And right now when I measure the humidity in here, the humidity in here is 35. So it was 30 when it was 77, and at 69, it's 35, which is still okay, but we're gonna lower the temperature another five degrees down to 65, and that will probably raise the humidity because the humidity is relative to the temperature. So this is what I tried to explain is that cold air can't hold as much water. And so as, as the humidity is in the air, it's a constant. So 70% humidity, or, or so say you have 80% humidity and it's 90 degrees outside. As, you, as the temperature drops, that 
80% humidity doesn't just go away. It just becomes a bigger percentage of the whole. So as the temperature drops, 80% humidity might be 90% humidity when the temperature is 80 instead of 90. So they're relative, just so you know. So when we lowered the temperature, so we had 16, we had 77 degrees with 30% humidity, which would be great. Now we lowered the temperature to 69 and the temperature is 30, the relative humidity is 35. That's still okay, but that, and that allows the dehumidifiers to run because they don't work before, below 30. Um, but we still need, we still need more because we're not going to leave the garage at 69 degrees in the winter it gets down to 55 or 50 even. So we're going to keep lowering the temperature and keep running dehumidifiers and they'll keep running because the humidity as a relative percentage will rise as we lower the temperature. So that's, and, and, uh, <laughs> and anyway, so it's working. It's all going to be okay. End of the story is we're going to survive. And, um, I've been explaining it to my husband. He didn't understand this. So it makes me think a lot of people don't understand it. It was actually hard for me to explain it. I had to keep thinking of how to explain it in, t in relative terms. So this is why when it's 90% humidity outside and it's 80 degrees or 90 degrees, whatever it is, and you have ice water on your picnic table, that's really cold. So when the air that's carrying all this humidity that can hang out in the air is fine, but next to the glass on that surface, it's cold and it causes it to turn into water, bulk water. So, um, so I hope this is helpful uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Check out my website, avoidingmold.com and cherylseco.com. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. For more free information on safe building, avoiding mold and water damage, visit avoidingmold.com.